So you're looking for a backpack for your drone, your FPV, or maybe even a hybrid bag that can handle some of your camera equipment as well. But if you're like me, you don't know which one you want. So <laughs> that's why I've got three of them here. I ordered all three because I didn't know which one I was gonna like, but spoiler alert, one of these is actually gonna stay with me because it's amazing and it fits my needs. So you've probably watched all the different reviews, Drone Cams, J Joshua Bardwell, etc. right? They've done the bags independently, but now we're gonna be able to lay these down side by side. I'm gonna fill it up with my drone stuff so you can see what it looks like actually filled up. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better idea as to which bag might be the better one for you. So let's talk about pricing quickly and how I got here. So with these three, these are all available on Amazon and obviously the benefit of that is free, easy returns and free shipping. I typically support the community and order directly from more of the FPV sites, but because the price was the same and then you had to pay shipping on top of that, it was just a better deal to get it from Amazon itself. I really wanted a backpack under the 100 mark I just wasn't gonna find what I wanted for the stuff that I have and the amount of stuff that I wanna carry. So now we need to look between the one and $200 mark. Okay, so we've got the Low Pro 250 here, right? This is retailing for right around a, a buck 30. Yeah, not a bad deal, we're gonna see, yes. Then we've got the HDLRC over here. This retails for 200. And then we've got the PGY Tech Momo 2 or something, <laughs> the link will be below. This is at 220 right now. So that we're pushing some premium prices. However, if you order on like a prime day deal, I got a steal of a deal between these two. This one normally at 200, I got for 160 and this is with tax and ship. And this one over here, 220 currently, I got this for a buck 75. So that makes it a lot more appetizing, way more appealing when you're under that threshold of 200. So let's start to take a look at these, but first let me show you what I'm currently working with. So when I first started FPV, I had this bag on hand. It's kind of like a utility bag. If you're like an electrician or maybe a plumber, you just need some basic tools, right? And it can close up on the top. What I like about it, and it still works great and I'll keep it on hand, but it's got a bunch of pockets on the front. We got some slipped in pockets on the back side, right? Obviously you've got all the opening up here where you can put all the stuff on the inside. So typically, right, I'll put some some of my different wires and things like that. My extra goggle batteries go in here, right? Uh, what is in here? Just extra electrical cords. Then my toolkit on the end over here. I usually put all my batteries and lipos that are grab and go over here. And then on the inside where you can put your goggles, you can put, I have props in here, lined on the bottom, stuff that I don't really need like zip ties, tape, extra props, extra nuts and screws and all that other great stuff that can just get be pressed down. And then there's more pockets on the inside. So it's really simple, right? You can pick it up, you carry it, you grab and go. It's lightweight and then it has a shoulder strap you can throw it on and that's great but sometimes I want to ride my bike or the e-bike down to the beach or maybe I'm on vacation and I'm gonna ride a bike or my electric skateboard it's very difficult to bring with you so I want something that's gonna be more of a backpack that's easy for me to sling on but then at the same time if I'm taking a trip I can actually pack more stuff into it so typically if I take a vacation or a trip and I'm bringing my drones I usually put them in a small carry-on roller and then I have my backpack packed to the hilt so I would like to offset that just a little bit I don't know if I'll be able to eliminate a roller altogether but for around town use I would definitely like a backpack more so it's just easier to take with so let's start with the smallest one this is the low pro B P 250 yes it's got this small kind of it's like a backpack yeah nothing too big nothing too small I wouldn't want anything smaller than this what I do like about is the exterior piece right here has that hard case type of feel so everything feels protected we've got webbing here on the top so you could hook other things in here whatever that might be but you've got that so let's just open up the main pocket here so you've got dual zips one on each side if you want Okay, and then this is gonna peel open and open right here. So we've got our different dividers and pockets, right? You can stuff batteries, uh, electronics, whatever you want in here, okay? Um, and you can obviously move these all around, right? And you've got some different straps and things to hold this in. So typically you probably put like a folding Mavic or an Air or something in this pocket right here. So open this up. You've got a pocket here that's gonna open into the top. So if you wanna reach in and out, we'll look at that again in just a second. Yeah, and then over here within the lid, yeah, you've got some extra storage and some bits and pieces. So you could slide your different tools in here. You've got a mesh pocket on the inside. You can put some other bits and pieces. It looks like this probably peels right off, right? So then you can take this off too if you need to go make a repair on the ground. So that's kind of nice, right? You got your like your little toolkit right here that holds in via Velcro, yeah? So is there a ton of space? I mean, we can make this work. I don't think I could fill this up with everything that I have in my other bag and fit a drone in here, unless it's gonna be, you know, like a two and a half or a three inch quad. Let's just see what happens with the five inch frame. 
right? So if I take the props off, if I take the antenna off, right, we're definitely gonna be able to fit a five inch quad right inside of here, but it definitely requires some deconstruction. So for this, we would have to strap it to the outside of the bag in order to take it with me on the go. Now in the upper part here, we've got some more, you know, like these webbing straps or lashings or whatever, I don't even know what the technical word is, more things you could strap onto it. So we've got one zipper pocket here, this is going to open up. This is not the one that connects to the main compartment of the bag, okay? So you might have some easy grab and go stuff here, right? There's a little clip right here, you got a little pocket, a little pocket. So something soft. I don't know, you can put your goggles in here. It's probably fine. Uh, totally up to you though. And then if we open up this compartment, so this is going to open up, right? So definitely a lot of space, right? This one could definitely hold a full size transmitter. I have a Radio Master Zorro, so that's smaller. So I could probably put in here vertically. Now, if you see it from here to the front, yeah, I could probably fit my goggles standing upright. And we're going to look at this because I'm going to pack it all in here after everything's done. Yes, yeah, so then we got some extra slip pockets. And you can put some pens and things like that here. If we look at the left side of the backpack, we've got a nice deep pocket here. So maybe you put like a tripod or a water bottle or something like that, whatever you need into this. And then on the right side, same thing over here, another web pocket tripod, whatever. As we get to the backpack part over here, you've got your straps that are gonna sling over and you've got a nice little chest clip, which is cool. And you can also slide this up and down so you can get adjustment so it pulls across your chest just the way you want it and like it. Yes, you've also got a quick pocket right here. You can slide your cell phone in. Um, let's see if this will fit like a, this is a Samsung S23. So my large old, I don't know, maybe if I squeeze it in there, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tight fit. I definitely had to work a little bit, but if I wanna have my phone, on my chest, easy access. Uh, yeah, I can put it in there. It's definitely a squeeze. If you have a slightly smaller smartphone, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit, but whatever it is you wanna put in, maybe your wallet and cash, right? Then you've got a uh, waist clip down here, that's convenient. And then the padding, it's soft. It's not super thick like the other bags, which you're gonna see shortly, but you've got that here. And then we have a laptop pocket here as well, which opens up you will be able to see here, I'll kind of show you from the front and then I'll show you from overhead just in case it's too close. All right, but you can slide uh, at least a 15 inch in here, maybe a 17, and you got a couple additional pockets in here to hold some different things. And we got one grab handle right here at the very top, but that's pretty much it for grab handles on the side. All right, let's check out another bag. Next, we've got the HDLRC bag. We've got a lot going on here. You probably watched us through a barbell video, so I'm gonna go over it just a little bit quicker. Okay, so right here on the very top, you got a nice hard case area where you can rest things. Yeah, we got three straps right here, and these are also removable, so you can undo the zips here and take this off if you don't want to. And then we have the straps here, which are held in kind of magnetic. Now, this is one of the Bardwell's complaints is he's like, what if, you know, somebody just accidentally hits the button and it comes undone? So with light pressure, yes, it could come undone if you push this because it doesn't actually clip together. Yes, but if you take this and you pull hard, and I'm really pulling with a lot of force, more force than should be, yet it's not gonna come apart. And if I'm pulling really hard and then I push, I have to push pretty hard in order to get it to release, okay? So I don't see that happening with me wearing this and hiking and being on a bicycle or something like that, but I might put maybe one extra layer of security in here somehow, some way, okay? Overall, I mean, look at this bag. This thing is amazing, okay? it's I think it's pretty much waterproof all the way around from the outside or all of this is gonna have water beat off if for some reason you're hiking through a rainstorm to go fly your drone, which doesn't make sense, yes? But let's just work our way around the outside first. So we have some more straps over here on the side, right? All of them are gonna have that kind of magnetic quick release if you wanna call it that. Yes, and you've got a little mesh pocket down here so you can put something tall, maybe like a mini tripod. Um, we'll talk about the big tripod on the bottom. So uh, left side over here, side pocket that opens, which is nice because it doesn't unzip all the way so all your stuff doesn't fall out. But it would be kind of cool if the zipper went a little bit further up here to the top. That way when you're laying it down like this, it could flop over more. But I'm definitely not complaining because if you have this thing standing upright, yeah, you have easy access and nothing is gonna fall out, okay? So having it like that is totally okay with me. Same thing on the other side, but let's just double check to make sure. Yep, same pocket, same mesh, and then you've got another strap over here that uses the magnets, but at least they hold their shape when you pull them tight, okay? So let's open the main pocket here into the bag. And then this flops open like so, okay? Now you can either just have it flop off completely by itself, or they give you these additional straps here that you can clip into that'll prevent this 
right, from opening like this or flopping all the way down, right? So you kind of have this, right? And then maybe it's a quick shot from the front. All right, good. So you've got that. So what do we got? We have some mesh pockets up here. This looks like it's gonna be good enough for me to fit seven inch props, right? I usually carry at least one set of props or just two blades, right? One clockwise, one counterclockwise with me. So this can hold a bag of a couple sevens, a couple fives, my three and a half, so these two and a half are nothing. But you got two mesh pockets here for easy grab and go stuff and probably stuff that's not gonna slip out as easily in my opinion. Then you have a zipper here at the very top where you can slide more things in here, whatever it is that needs to be safe and secure that doesn't accidentally fall out. And then we have the main compartment here on the front. So they give you all the different dividers. Yes, they are not placed in automatically, which is great. So then you can organize it. Um, I did test out the space. I gave it the old kitty test because my cat loves to go in here. So this will definitely fit a medium cat only, but we got a lot of space in here. This is deep, right? Like my hands length and depth, right? Front and back and all of that great stuff. And then if we take the five inch, pro, uh, five inch quad with props, if we're careful, right, we could fit it in there, right, with the props on and everything. And you can see how much space that we've got. I'm very confident this is gonna work out, right? And you put all these different sectionals in here and you know how you wanna organize, right? And you can have whatever, right? You just go to town, right? A lot of space, a lot of space. Um, and this is why I'm leaning towards a backpack of something like this, like this size. So we'll be back to fill this up here shortly. So let's look at some of the other pockets. Now on the very top here, it's probably gonna be too close for the overhead camera. Yes, yeah, so you got one more strap over the top and then this is gonna open up, right? And you've got storage, you've got easy access storage with a strap in here. So if you wanna put, right? I mean, Bardwell already put a full size controller in there, right? You can definitely fit goggles. But let me just see if I can get an overhead view. I will look inside. I don't know, I can't actually see the top of the camera anyways. Yes, but I could probably get my Zorro and the goggles in here. We're gonna find out shortly. And then there's also a additional zip pocket underneath here. Yes, for some extra storage. So I like the grab and go access here at the very top for the goggles and the receiver. Now if we come around to the backside, we got some extra thick, chonky padding right here. Yes, we got some clips down here. I don't know if it's missing a belt or something because it didn't come with it and there's no other accessories. So I don't know what these are for 100%. Um, you've got your straps up here. They give you a couple extra like carabiner clips and some stuff. Yes, um, and then you have the adjustment here as well. So you can slide the shoulder pads up or down depending on it, right? Between these little pieces right here. So you can see uh, this, this, this. What actually happens is you can undo, yeah, the Velcro like this, and then you can move all of this up or down. So I guess it depends on the gravity and the weight and the, the center of gravity and the load that you've got going and probably how tall you are too as to how you want to adjust that. So that's super nice and convenient. And then if you want to store your laptop, I believe this is the laptop storage area back here. So it opens up from the side. Yes, throw this over to the side, All right? And then you can slide your computer in here. Definitely fit a 15, I don't know about a 17 inch. It might be a little bit tight. And then last but not least here on the very bottom, we've got these straps. Okay, people were definitely complaining about these. They actually, they do suck, <laughs> okay? They don't work very good because if you just pull, it continues to come loose. So people are complaining about that, but really that's just a, a couple dollar fix. Go to Walmart, yeah, get some new buckles, take this apart, make it right, do it the right way, and these things will work perfect, okay? And you can clip them together or you can find one that just doesn't slide as much as this metal. But it does have some pretty heavy duty bottom pieces right here, so when you set it on the ground. And then overall, there are a lot of places where you can grab this bag and has uh, like web straps that are built in. A couple here on the bottom. You have one here over the back where you can pick it up. You've got the main one at the very top, right? You use the secondary one. Um, and I guess you could grab from the sides, but at least back bottom and top, easy grab all the way around. Now, last but not least, we've got the PGY Tech One Mo 2. That's the official name. And this thing is a monster. Now, this is not specifically built for FPV, but it does have drone support. So it's kind of a hybrid camera slash drone bag. You're gonna see this thing has a lot of storage, okay? Exterior wise, beautiful construction, right? All weatherproof, rainproof type of stuff like I, I just feel amazing with this thing. I'm just, touch is nice, okay? <laughs> so on the outside, so we do have some straps here on the top, but they don't give you anything that goes across, but this is a real nice material. You could easily get some, you know, Velcro straps and then you can strap it to the arms of your quad, but heavy duty stitching, it's really nice, okay? As we work around on one side, so this is the right side of the bag, 
Okay, you have an access pocket over here, which is gonna lead to the interior, which we're gonna look at here shortly. But within this little pocket right here is another pocket, or this, I guess within this door is a little pocket that opens up. And this is interesting, so if you can see this right here, I'll show you from the front and back, but they have little slots so you can put your drone batteries, most likely like a DJI type of drone. And then it has a little slider so you can mark your batteries, whether they're uh, charged or dead, which is a super nice touch. Um, obviously I use uh, TPU printed color ones for my LiPo batteries, but it's always annoying not knowing which ones are full or empty. So that's a nice little touch right there for the drone pilot in you, okay? So that's the first pocket on the right side towards the bottom, okay? Second, we have another access pocket here on the right side at the top for a top area. Once again, another little pocket built in with some mesh right here. So you can obviously open this up for some easy grab and go items without having to open the entire bag. So get creative there. On the left side of the bag here, yeah, we have a deep pocket over here. You can put like a tripod once again, or a water bottle or something like that. And if it protrudes too much, yes, yeah, so you've got a strap up here where you can clap this down. Now their straps, right, they're all, uh, their straps are at least this strap, right, has more of a hooking action to it. So it comes across, they've got these really nice like loops that you can hook onto, which is really cool. And we'll look more at this in just a second here. But let's look at this pocket and see what this is, because I don't even remember. We got a pocket here on the side boom and that opens up so you can probably slide like a phone a wallet or something like that into this pocket here doubling back to this strap right over here that hooks over this you can also use this or i would also use this to go across over here so if you needed to strap your drone in and you don't have any of the uh, velcro cables with you why can't you just use this if you're not using the side piece and slide it underneath here or you can go over the top totally up to you but i would just slide it underneath and now you're able to hook right, your drone body in here and you can clamp it down, right? You could always just rotate it. I mean, give it a little half twist and then you can go over the top. Yes, and then you can hook over this, right? And then tighten everything down nice and secure or on any kind of angle. So maybe you can get like two drones on here as well. So there is potential to strap it if you don't already have uh, Velcro straps. But if you're an FPV pilot like myself, of course you do. And <laughs> what are we tripping on? We'll just keep them out here for easy access and strap our drones on it if we wanted to. Coming around here to the backside, we got a lot going on here. Really nice straps happening over here. Completely adjustable, of course. Yes, yeah, so we've got a little pocket here on the right shoulder strap. Yes, yeah, so you have easy access and it stretches too. That's kind of nice. So you could fit, I don't know, snacks. Can I fit a phone in here? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, would it go over? Oh yeah, that's cool. I mean, it's a little bit of work. I wouldn't call it easy in and out. There, it's possible, it's doable. I could put my phone in here if I wanted to. I'm probably not going to though. Probably gonna have it in my pocket or something else anyways, yes? So, but it is kind of cool. It's kind of stretchy, kind of pushes out there. So you have extra space if you need it. And then this, we have a couple more of these hook straps again, let's see. So these ones clip, it's just one set and it could go across and you push and it slides under and it clamps on. So this one's a little more secure, but then when you wanna pull it, right? Like if I pull, it's not coming undone, but then you lift and it does come undone. So that's kind of cool. And you can take it off on both sides here. So now we could take this piece and bring it to the front if I don't need it for the backside or something over my chest, right? Okay, so yay. So now we have a win. We have one strap and that's probably all we're really gonna need anyways, yes? And then over here, we got some more heavy duty stuff that we could link onto for whatever reason. I don't even know. Yes, and then here we got a heavy duty belt. And look at this. This is a heavy duty belt. Pull this to the side. Yeah, so a solid belt, lots of padding here. This is really cool. I'm digging that. Yep, and it clips in real nice. And then up the back, some solid padding and the padding has some indentations in it as well. So it's gonna have that breathability. And then on the very bottom, yeah, I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if it's better from the top up here, right? We've got a nice solid protected bottom down here. Some extra hickory dues, which we're gonna look at shortly because we've got some extra stuff. So you can see that right here. You can latch on even more bags underneath you and strap in whatever it is you wanna strap in. A lot of options. Once again, as far as picking this thing up, we haven't even looked inside yet, right? We've got a huge strap on the back side. This thing's heavy duty. We've got one from the top here. Yes, and are there any more around the sides? Nope, that's it, okay? So let's take a look on the inside. So for this one, it's gonna be the back panel that flops open. All of my zippers are over here, like this. Okay, so now this is gonna open up 
Now we're gonna look at the main compartment here. So now we've got this main compartment, but wait, there's more. Yes, this one actually comes with an additional storage bag. Okay, so we're gonna look at the bag itself here shortly, but we've got this main one big pocket. They're heavy duty dividers, right? These aren't soft ones. They're kind of like cardboardy in nature. And all of this Velcro is super strong. So they give you one, two, this is already set up so you could drop a huge DSLR, right? Then you've got all these individual dividers over here so you can set up all your little pockets. Yes, and then if we took it, we could almost fit the five inch here with these dividers, but you can pull these dividers out. So you're gonna see like easily, you know, if I wanted to, and store it inside. I could put a five inch quad. I could probably even fit a seven inch if I took the props off. I don't know, let's just see for funsies. Yeah, barely, look at that. I mean, I could put my seven inch quad right inside of here if I take the props off and then I could pack everything on top. So that's pretty cool too. That's a lot of space right there as far as internal compartment is concerned, right? And then don't forget, we had that easy access pockets on the side that open up. So if you wanna reach in and grab something, you can do that. And if you're splitting it between the top half and the bottom half, you can do that. So I would probably put, you know, like my goggles and my remote up here on the top half, or maybe even have it on the side here so I could just slide them in and out. That's actually an excellent idea. So I'm gonna look at that and see if that's possible when we build this out, okay? And then if we come over here, right, we're built into the flat piece. Yes, we're gonna have two big pockets here. And this has a little strap over it like this. Let me show you from the front just in case. Yeah, so now we can slide a computer, some books, whatever. This is all gonna be able to go inside of here. It's all really cush too. And you have it protected and then this would be on top of everything in here, okay? So with that being said, right, a lot of space here. Let's close this up because we're not done, my friends, because we still have something up here. Okay, so we have one final pocket on the outside. So it's kind of like your suitcase has expandable storage. You just undo a zip and it pops up and you can fit more in. So you can take this, you unzip this piece around the top here. Okay, boom, and then it puffs right up. So let me show you from the overhead, right? So now we've got this expandable storage compartment that pops out, yeah, like this. And you can see how much space here. This has gotta be, right, at least three inches of additional room right here. So if you're really trying to backpack and take a bunch of stuff. Now, it's not the most easily accessible pocket because I had to do the first zipper to expand the storage, and now I have to open this up. So let's see, we've got some packing in here to make it look nice and full. Okay, and I'm probably gonna have to show this from the front, but we'll try overhead first. Yeah, so overhead, I don't know if you can see inside of here. Oh, here we go, sorry, I'm being terrible at this. Good, yay, it opens, it flops open. Okay, so now we have an extra storage pocket in here with a few inches of additional depth and space. We've got a big pocket in here, you could put props or whatever. We've got a couple mesh pockets up top, anything you wanna inlay in here. In the lid component, right, we have like a half pocket. It only goes down to right here. And we have some additional bits and pieces. So this looks like we've got a rain fly in here to cover the bag completely. Yes, and then we've got some additional straps here. Okay, so now we're winning even more. So now we have more straps for the exterior piece right, if we want to strap our drones down. And these actually look really long. I actually think that these are going to be used with that additional bag on the bottom right here. So let's take a look at this extra little bag that's included right here, kind of like the other one with the style, right? It's got these little lashing webbing pieces over here. Yeah, waterproof all the way through, has a nice grab handle, right? We've got connecting pieces here, connecting pieces here. And yeah, so on the very top, let's see what we got. I haven't even looked at this. So we've got a top piece pocket the size of this up here. We go through the top zipper. This is gonna open up into the main camera bag. And then within the lid here, we have kind of like an overlap fold of mesh pockets here. You can put batteries or whatever you want inside. Okay, interior wise, we've got a carry strap, probably a shoulder strap. Okay, we got some of the dividers just like in the other bag here, the heavy duty ones. Yes, and so we can organize this. We can pull them out if we want to. Yeah, they're all in their Velcro. But we've got a lot of space in this, depending on how you want to use this. Okay, I like this because I need a camera bag as is for my camera that's recording over here, my Sony a6500. Yeah, so this might become, if I keep this bag, yeah, this is gonna be my daily bag for this when I take it to studio shoots and small stuff like that. And then when you've got this all together, with all the straps that they've got included, if you really wanted to strap this underneath, you could do that too, like this. And then you have, you know, tons of storage, right? You have your main bag with everything else. You have a camera bag or whatever extra storage you want under here. Who really knows? 
massive amount of storage. So before I fill them up, I just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of all the compartments, completely empty so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like in a row. Obviously the Low Pro 250 is gonna be the smallest one here, but it comes up and you have that easy access storage for a goggle or a radio or maybe both if it's super small. But as we move into these other ones, these are just a different class of storage here. Uh, these two are pretty close side by side. This one has just a little bit more with the easy access pocket up here, which is gonna have your goggle or your controller or maybe both depending on the size of it. But this one is gonna have more storage space overall. If you factor in the front side pocket, we just looked at and the included bag that they are going to give you as well for free. So this one will have the most storage overall compared to this one. Kit, yeah, I didn't put everything, but this would be like my backup tool kit. I'm going to show you where I have my main one, but I've got some screws, some extra nuts, what have you, a pair of pliers, just in case I need that in the field. And then on the top here, so let me zip this up. So it's all nice and secure, right? So it does close up quick and easy. It's got a little bit of weight to it. So in this top pocket first, the one that wasn't for the goggles, Obviously you can tell I don't have my goggles, right? I just put my toolkit in here. So this is what I usually use. It's really easy. It stays contained. I got this from Walmart. So that fit perfectly up there. I like that it's grab and go right off of the top. Um, so I don't have to pull it out if I don't want to. I don't need to open up the main compartment if I don't want to. And then in the top here, I did have to be a little bit ginger, but it does fit because I have a Radio Master Zorro. Right? I can fit the goggles and the controller in here. Here's it from the front as well so you can see, right? But if I'm careful, I can put the goggles in kind of on an angle. And these are the V2 goggles. So if you have like the new O3 goggles, those are smaller, right? And then I have my Radio Master Zorro, which fits inside of there. If I had a full on boxer or right, a big radio, yeah, you're gonna have to choose one or the other, but both of them aren't gonna fit. So then if you have a big controller, most likely it's gonna go in here. So then that says the question is where would your goggles go? Right, so I would probably have to take my goggles and put it down in here somewhere and take out some of the stuff. And then now we start to get a little bit uh, compact on space. Like like that, it does, I can't put it in there because I'm gonna squish it. I don't feel comfortable with that. So I'm probably gonna have to take this and get this in here flatter. This might have to come out. I don't know, let's just see, right? Like I haven't really gone through it because Obviously, this is not the backpack that I'm gonna keep. Okay, so that works, okay? Maybe I'm gonna have to ditch the monocular for something, or maybe that'll fit up, I don't know. So definitely, I'm gonna make a little bit of a sacrifice here for some of this stuff. All right, now we've got the HTLRC filled up here. Yeah, a lot more space to work with. This is amazing right here. Okay, so on the very top pocket, I'll show it to you from the front. Yes, um, there's only room for one or the other. You either want the remote or you want the goggles in there. But I do like how this strap holds it in here and prevents it from falling around. Maybe you can see this from the top. Yeah, so that is super convenient. So now I have some extra space to put whatever in here. I don't know, snacks, <laughs> right, with the dead space. I tried to squeeze the two in here. It's just too tight, okay? So choose one or the other, but I'll show you what I did here in the main cabin. Yep, so we open this up and you can see here from the top, yes. So we got a lot of space in here. We got a lot of different things happening. So within the lid itself, you know, I've got my props here. I've got my battery checker, a couple other things that I want as easy access. The things I don't miss or I don't mind forgetting about are gonna be tucked in here, paperwork, nuts, screws, things of stuff that I don't always need, right? Because I don't fly FPV and break all the time. But then in here, you can see we actually have a lot of space, right? I have one pocket dedicated to the goggles. You could kind of stand them up. I don't know how I feel about that yet, but if you did that, if you're okay with that, if maybe if you had like the, the O3 goggles, yes, um, you could do that or, or goggles too. Yeah, then you would have another uh, vertical space right here, which is fine. So I chose a high divider, but I could just use the lower one if you want, right? And actually that might not be a bad idea because this gave me more space here. Instead of having a high divider, now I can actually fit, you know, a two and a half or a three and a half inch quad right on top here. So I've got my monocular in there and then there's this one drone to start, but we could fit way more in here. And then if you're responsible and you like to use a fireproof bag for your batteries when you carry them, right? Then you have that option to slide that right in here. And this thing is not packed to the hilt with every single battery as well. But now I have more dead space that is usable to put a couple of quads on the inside, whether I'm on the go, or I could take this out, right? I could put my camera in here if I'm going on a trip, an actual trip on an airplane, so I can carry photography gear with me just in this main compartment here. So that's super convenient. I really like that, right? And then it just closes up nice and easy. 
So in the side pocket over here, I just put my tool kit like I had. So that's nice, easy access off from the side. And then on the other side over here, I just threw in some of my ND filters, right? My cases and kits like that. So that's easy access on one side or the other. And then don't forget, you still have this extra storage here on the side if you're not using it for something else. And then obviously that doesn't account for the laptop pack uh, storage on the back side if you happen to be bringing a computer with you. But typically I don't. For normal flight type of stuff, if I'm taking a trip, yes, I'm probably gonna put the laptop in there. Last but not least, we got the PGY Tech bag. Okay, this thing has an excessive amount of storage, <laughs> like we saw earlier. Okay, so on the sides, we'll start from the outside in. So in one of the side pockets, I've got some ND filters. Okay, this is the left side uh, pocket over here. I've got, you know, whatever I want to put in here. I just put some antennas, but I could put some additional like paperwork or you know, drone registration, all that other good stuff. Yeah, on this side over here, remember, we have those quick access doors. Yes, and this is where it gets amazing, actually. So on the upper one, the door's a little bit smaller. So I was able to convert that. We have this pocket here where I could put stuff into it. I don't need to put anything in there yet, but I got the side pocket door, right? And now I can grab my goggles out of the top part. Yes, so boom, easy slide in, take it, put it back. I can slide it back in there. I'm not doing a good job making it look graceful, right? But look, just like that, I've got easy access to my uh, DJI goggles. And then on this other side door, which is really cool, yeah, this one's a little bit wider, so I rigged it, and you're gonna see what the inside looks like, right, so that now I can get my controller right out through the side. Super convenient. Okay, none of those offer that. So this works great. And then here I've got like uh, screws, the nuts, bolts, things that aren't really important, but I can easily grab both the controller and the goggles from the side. So then what does that look like from the inside? Okay. Remember, this is not necessarily a drone specific backpack, okay? But it works. So the upper half, you saw the goggles here, they go out the door. I put a divider in here so I can put the controller in and out. All right, I still have space here for a two and a half or a three inch quad. If I wanna pack it on the inside, All right? I got my batteries here in a bag if you're trying to keep them in a fireproof bag. And then up here, we still have a bunch of space, right? I got the toolkit here, my monocular. Yes, and then if I wanted to throw, you know, like some GoPro stuff in here, I could do that. Or I could rearrange this for a trip and figure out how to get my Sony a6500 in here. And then in this whole laptop storage area, I still have the space. I could easily put the laptop in here. We'd still be able to close. And then up here, I just put some additional extras like props. Uh, Velcro straps, things of that nature here, okay? And that's just the main compartment that doesn't even factor in, right? You've got all the storage here, which is expandable up top if you want that, especially for a trip. And then last but not least, it also still doesn't factor in the fact that they give you a free additional bag here too. So for me overall, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is gonna be the clear winner for me because this is gonna be a dedicated drone bag. This is gonna be for me when I take my camera with me to the studio or something else like that. I don't need two bags total. I just need this small one and that'll help carry my lenses and the camera and the monitor. I use this or if I go on a big vacation, boom, I can strap everything together and take it with me because we've got all those additional straps that they gave me. <laughs> I'm saying a lot of me. Yes, but you can now we can have the straps that we wanted. I was talking about earlier because I didn't pay attention, but now we can strap all the drums down. So what more could you want? This thing offers a lot, especially at the price. Woo, that was a lot, my friends. Hopefully this video was not too excessively long, but there was a lot to cover and a lot to go through. So which one is right for you? Who am I to say? I think this bag is too small for me personally, but if you're a minimalist, you don't have a lot going on, this might work. Can you find this for under a hundred? I don't know, I was looking around. I didn't see anything that was a little more drone specific that was gonna meet me at that price point. Now these two are definitely pushing it up there along with the iFlight bags and the Pyro drones. All of those are like 150-ish plus, okay? This one's currently 200. This one over here is pushing 220. But if you catch them on Prime Day and you get a good deal like I did, it makes it a more, lot more appealing. Like I said, this one has excellent storage. This one has a lot of storage and you get the additional bag. So is it worth the extra? I think so. If you're like me and you know you've got extra and you have a purpose for this, you're getting kind of a two for one and then you have expandable storage here. If you're gonna go backpacking or take a really big trip, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That's kind of my mindset. So if you're interested in checking some of these out, I'll put the links down below. Well, yeah, there's affiliate links and it does help me with the creation of the content and the videos. But if you like it, click the link, buy it. That would help me out greatly. But I love this bag. This is gonna be my new go-to and I'll check back with you in the future. If I change my mind or something goes wrong, I'll definitely let you know. 
That's it. I'll see you in another video.